Uh, we're, we're, we're gonna be good. What's up, brother? We're going to be good today, man. I'm yeah, we back. Today. <laughs> we back, y'all. We back. I told you we was yeah. going to come back and we was going to do this. We're going to hear my brother clearly today. We're going to hear clearly how my yes. man feels and, and have a good conversation for y'all, man. So everybody sitting here, man, you know what I'm saying? Share, man. Like, you know what I mean? Let's let's get busy. We'll wait for some of y'all to get, come in here before we start talking some stuff. And let's see what's going on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, I, I'm not, I'm not feeling that heat though, homie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's bad, man. It, nah. it, it, I, we're not used to it. I'm not used to it, man. So yeah, we're trying to do all our our errands in the morning, morning before yeah. the sun, like it's it's scorching hot. So yeah, I gotta get, I, I man, I gotta get it on, man, man. I get up early in the morning, man. When it get hot, I'm trying to get up out of that sun. I'm not, I ain't even trying to be in it. <laughs> Jack Beer, what's up, Doctor X? What's up with you? What's up with all the people that's coming in here, man? Anti-social, what's up with you? Kisher, what's good? What's good? Yeah. Beats, what's good with it? Muscle on the track, what's happening? Roofs, what's up with it? L, what's going on, man? What's going on? Tree Production, Born, what's up? Funny Farm. How's it going? How's it going? Blue Way, what's good? Alpha, what's good? Brian, what's up with it? Two Papa, what's up with you? You ask me how many sounds come with the T-shirt. That's a lot of sounds, homie. There's a lot of sounds that's 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 in the in the drums. It's like four banks of sounds that fill up all your MPC. So you got like four banks of sounds. It's the need kits. You can only get it by getting the shirt, by getting the converter shirts. Sound sounded voltage. What's up with it? Black Ab, Ali Star. What up? <clears throat> I see you, man. I see y'all. Smitty was good. Minkin, what's good? Poster, what's up? Obs Obscure Street, what's up with it? Eric, what's up with it? Yeah. Salute. Y'all push the like button for, for your boy. You know what I'm saying? Let's get the like button going. We're 15 in here, 62 in here. Let's get it going. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them who you are, Mel. Tell them, buddy. This is uh, Malo, and uh, man, I'm excited to be here. I know last time we were on live, uh, I was just up in the mountains so i had really bad reception so i kept cutting off but there was so much we wanted to get into and talk about that we probably did not even get into the topics we wanted to talk about so hopefully today we we have a smooth uh, connection and uh we get we get this uh these converse, conversations going you know first of all <clears throat> shout out to malo you know what i'm saying for for being here again and and um and taking the time out to just you know uh get on the platform man and um reason why I have him on the platform because there's somebody that I've been watching for a little bit and contrary to what people know about EA Ski I'm a fan of people that really work hard and when I see certain things I'm a fan of it I'm inspired you know I'm inspired whether it's on a big level whether it's on a smaller level whether you're known whether you're not known when I'm inspired and when I watch what you do and I said this before I love how you're presenting it I love how passionate you are. Like, I see the yeah. passion. Like, I think that's the <laughs> biggest thing is the passion. I see you get excited when you're hearing it. You're hearing your drums going to yeah. get the sample. You just, I, I see it because I'm the same way, you know? Yeah, man. It's like a mirror, good. you know? And, yeah. you know, and that's very rare. You get a chance to see people that's really passionate about their music and their craft. And like I said, I don't see no... I'm just going to put it as clear as I can is I don't see no agenda with you. Yeah. You know, I don't see an agenda. I see a person that's passionate about their music and is sharing it with the world and you're using your platform to doing it and you're being as transparent as you can to get people to see your love for what you do. And that's oh, the way it comes off. And I hope it continues to come off like that because we need those type of content creators that really, really loves it and really understand the gear that they're dealing with, you know, like, you know, just, you know, we're not just seeing the gear, you know, you're really breaking it down. You're really showing a process and to top it off, which I never really see that often is the track sounds fire, you know, <laughs> because let's just be real. We see people all the time and they show you all of this stuff. And then you hear the beat, you're like, bro, that's that. I saw what you did, but you did all of that to make that. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, you know, 
you know, I'm just a realist, bro. I I, I just want to be inspired. So I just want to <laughs> get, you know, I just want to give you your flowers, bro, and tell you, you know, I love oh, what you're man. doing. And, 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 and that's that's inspiring, man. So, you know, just tell your process of what you're thinking about when you're doing what you're doing, my brother. Man, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. So it means a lot coming, you know, from someone like you. And uh, it, it's, it's so funny you say about the tracks that I put out because – uh, if anybody that's been following my channel, I, I usually like to put like the first 15 seconds of my video with the beat that I'm going to be putting together because I hate it when I'm watching a video and it's like 15 minutes into the video. I'm like, oh, man, this, this track is whack. I don't want to learn from this. Right. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm not right. like everybody's going to like my stuff. I understand like my, right. my style is not for everybody, but I try to let people, you know, save some time for people that is like, yeah, this is not what I'm rocking with, and I'll just click out of it. So I try to just show a little bit of, of what I'm going to be doing in the next 15 minutes. You're going to invest with me. So, right, uh, right, man, right. Uh, th thank you. Thank you for everything that you said, man. Like that, that really means a lot. And I, I think uh, uh, when you say, like, if there's any agenda or anything like that, I, I'm driven by the, the passion and the love for this art that we do. And I don't think there's an agenda for that. I don't think there's you know, even a direction, you know, some people would ask me like, where do you see yourself five years from now or 10 years from now? I don't have it all figured out, you know, and I, I feel confident and comfortable saying I, I don't have everything figured out piece by piece, but I know I'm in the right place. It just feels like I'm in the right place. There's certain things that I do, certain avenues that I try to get into in my life. And I'm just like, you know, this doesn't feel like me. It feels like I'm trying to be someone that I just don't feel like it's me. But when mm. I'm in the studio, I'm, I'm creating, I'm, I'm in the art of making uh, with my mind, just creative. I feel like it's just natural to me. It's, it's easy to me. So my way of life is like, I want to focus on those things and, and, and embrace that side of me. So when you see me behind my NPC, I, you know, I don't care who's watching or who's, you know, going to be with me in the video. But I just have fun, man. Like I try my best to project that. Because I know that people that feel the same way I do, they're going to click with me. They're going to rock with me. And, and, and it's a mutual feeling, man. I don't try to be cool. I don't try to put like a hard face or try to be too, you know, so tough. I, right. I'm just me, man. Like I, I, I always said this, it brings out the kid in me. And I hope I do show it. I'm not afraid to show those things. Like I could be 30, 40, 50 year old person, but as long as I'm doing what I love, it's something that just brings out the youth in me, man. And, and that's something that keeps me fresh. It, it keeps me happy with my family, my, my daughter. Like, man, why are you so happy? Like, because I do what I love, you know, and I'm right, always going to sure. do what I love. For sure. For sure. I mean, man, I think that's the most important thing. And this is kind of what I was talking about, I think, yesterday when I got on my live. I was just telling people that, you know, a lot of people that do music need to really understand if you're doing it on a level of what I do it on, you have to really get some self-discipline about what you're trying to do because there's so many levels to doing this music. You know what I mean? Yeah. And But the first and foremost thing about any of this, and you said it, was you got to love it. You yeah. got to love it and you got to act like when you're making your music, nothing else exists besides your vision. You know, if you think about somebody else's vision, it's going to take you away from you being creative. It's going to take you away from you doing something that can challenge the industry again, because a lot of the music today is pretty much repetitive. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of the same thing. Nobody want to take a chance. And sometimes when you're being the love for music makes you take chances and say, you know what? I don't know if anybody going to like this, but I'm, I'm going to do what I feel. This feels good <laughs> to me. And, you That's know, right. and I was I was giving an example, man. I was telling people about when I did the Friday soundtrack. Um uh, you know, the first Friday soundtrack with Cube and, and Chris Tucker. And and um, it was a lot of music that was going on that was really, really like, it was talking about a lot of like smoking weed and drinking. Yeah. And and no, no knock on anybody to do that. I've never smoked a drink in my life. So there was no way that I could cover that type of topic and not mm. be true to, to yeah. who I am and what I represent. So, you know, but that's that was the popular thing. It was that's what was going on. So here you get an opportunity to be on a on a soundtrack with Dr. Yeah. Dre and <laughs> Ice Cube and Cypress Hill and the Alcoholics and Scarface and Two Live. I mean, some of the biggest people in the world, you have to try. It's nerve wracking, but I love my music so much. I wrote from my own perspective. 
No. And even when I wrote from that perspective, I said, I don't know if they're going to feel this or not, but this is what I wrote. This is how I feel. And when I sent it in, they called me screaming on the phone like, oh, my God, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. This is, you know, and it's the best feeling in the world because you you kind of have doubt. You know, it's always a hard thing when you're in a game and you see stuff that's winning, but you're trying to be original and you say, well, are they going to accept my originality or wow. do I have to try to fit? It's one of them cold games. So, you know, yeah, but I think the key thing is you have to love it. You have to love it and you have to be willing to sacrifice and take a chance and go against the grain to become whoever you want to become, man. You know, and not everybody's going to feel everybody has a different ear for music. You know, you know that that's actually very powerful, and that's just having confidence in yourself. And also, I mean, I know you're a man of faith because that's something that's that's that you have to commit with the, within your. It's personal, you know. You can't. Sure. I can't tell you like I have faith or I'm confident in myself. I can tell you whatever I want, but I think where it, you really get tested is in those moments. I, there's so many times, and I'm a victim of it, where I'll try to be accepted by a certain uh, placement or a certain person. So I'll, I'll not be myself because I want to be accepted by this. But I know if I do get accepted, then I better, uh, you know, keep acting whatever it is that I have to be uh, so I can stay in that role. Versus if right. I'm just myself, not everybody's going to like me. Not everybody's going to rock with me. And I'm OK with that. Right. But the people that do rock with me are going right. to see the real me and they're going to rock with me like for forever. As long as I'm here right. because it, this is who I am naturally. So I think right. that's something that. I've always uh, told myself as well, it's like, hey, just be me. Not everybody's here to like me or love me, but it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's other people that I've seen that I'm like, yo, I don't really rock with this person, and it's okay. I mean, this is the way it is, but I think just having faith in yourself and being confident in yourself, I think that's uh, very important. That's something that we're probably going to get into in a little bit right now of just – knowing where you want to be in your life, you know, how mm -hmm. uh, not, not just listening to this person and then that person and then that person, there's so many information being shot at us at once is hard to commit. And I think the commitment comes in is like, you got to know what, what you're into, what do you love and what, not just what do you love, but what do you not like? <laughs> yeah. I think that's just right. as important. Yes. Yes. Very true. Very true. Very true. I mean, you have to know, there's a lot of stuff that people don't like, but it becomes popular where it forces them to feel like they have to conform into something that they really don't like. But they feel that's the only opportunity is to try to, to get in the box. And what I'm trying to share with my audience and everybody that's on here right now is that the whole thing about doing music is practicing. And it's practicing to be able to make whatever you want, even when people haven't heard it. And to make sure that when you practice, it doesn't matter. It's going to be dope because you practice hard. I can yeah. work on something right now. And you've never heard it. But when you hear it, you're going to be like, man, I ain't never heard that, but it sounds good. The quality, <laughs> the quality of it first is going to hit you. This is why I'm into sound. I tell people, people's biggest battle with their music is not because they don't have great music. It's because they don't have great dynamics in their music. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm just being totally honest. I see it. I get demos. I get all of this. And I say, man, I love the way it feels, but I, 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 I can hear through it. But the average consumer is not going to give you that opportunity. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Because there's so much stuff out there. They, it's got to hit your ears, bro. You know, and I tell people the reason why we like Dr. Dre. And this is and this is real talk. And Dre is my homie. Love him to death. I don't think we love Dre because of his beats. We love Dre because of the sonics of oh, his man. beats. Right? Okay. Let's yeah, just be yeah. real. Dre keeps yeah. it very simple. You know, that and he brings stuff in, he brings stuff in, but he got so much space uh, and so much dynamic range. That's what makes the beat fire. That's nah, what makes man. him have the best beats, right? I know cats that can make beats that just sound crazy. I mean, oh, complex man, yeah. and it's dope. But when you hear the final product, it's not as dynamic because it's so much going on and the mixing and the spacing, it just gets cluttered up and it loses the impact of what it could be. Wow. So, so sonic dynamics 
is so important. And this is why Dre is the best producer to ever do it, because he understands that. You know what I'm saying? DJ Quick understands that. Yeah. I understand that. Battle Cat. There's a lot of other cats that understand it, but this is what I try to get people to understand. A lot of cats are making great beats, beat makers, but they got to understand when you get, when you're, when you're, when you're dragging and dropping, when you're not using certain things that you're supposed to use, when you don't understand converters, when you don't understand these type of things, you stifle your growth on where your music could really go. It could really uh, go yeah. to a whole nother level. So, you know, we can speak on that from your perspective. Man, you, you, it, it almost feels like I'm talking to myself right now because I <laughs> right. do exactly, exactly what you said. It's, yeah. There's so many times where I've pointed out why do I like this track so much? Like some of my favorite productions, I, I try to dissect them. What is it about this? What Like it is the most simple tracks ever. Uh, sample, drums, bass, maybe some other elements thrown on top. But I'm like, why do I like this so much? Like the melody is okay. The way they did the chops – is not mainly, like you said, it's not mainly the, the structure or the composition of the beat. It's so simple. But then I start going into the sound, the way that the kick hits, the way the snare slaps, the way the bass comes in. And I'm like, you know, subconsciously, without me knowing, I like the sound of this more than I like the way it's arranged. And I think that's something that I've, I mean, you nailed it right on the head right there because I've tried to say it, but I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, in my world, in my own uh, way of interpreting music, I'm like, I like how this sounds. So what yeah. I've always done, and we were actually talking about this the last time that we went live, is I do my best to to study whether like who mixed this, or who produced this, uh, what did they use, what sampler did they use. So when I when I got started uh, making beats, the 2000 XL was my first sampler. The reason why it wasn't because it was a Kai or anything like that. Is because Pete Rock used the MPC. Pete for Rock, me, Pete Rock brother, Pete. was yeah. the person that, as a kid, I, I that those that production right there, the solid production, was my biggest influence. So I would look at my favorite producers and see what they're using. And when I would, you know, Pete Rock was rocking with a with a, a 2000 XL. When I would see some of his videos, read some of those articles. So I got into it because I, I knew it was something about the sound. I could have dragged and dropped samples in uh, you know, GarageBand because that's, you know, I started with a little Emac, but I was like, no, it just doesn't sound the same. So then right. I started getting into like, I got to get an MPC. And then that's when I started hearing a difference with the sound of, of beats that I was putting out. I could have made the same exact beat in uh, GarageBand and then done it the same way in, in my XL. But that's where I heard the difference. And then I started feeling like, all right, I, I feel a little more professional. Right, right, right. It right. sounds good, you know? Right, right, right. I mean, listen, you know, I tell people, man, you know, doing music, I've had the luxury to come in an era where the machines that, that I've been able to have, they just naturally had a great sound to it. That Whether it was the, the original TR-808, the TR-909, the... Uh, you know, saying the SB 1200, the 60, the MPC 60, the 3000, the ASR 10, all of these machines back in this day, for whatever reason, they, they focused on sound. And something that I talked to Roger Lynn about, you know, that I haven't shared with everybody yet, you know, and I got an interview coming, is that Roger Lynn was saying that at the end of the day, these drum machines was meant to compete with drummers, with live drummers, right? Yeah. Drummers. Now, if you think about drummers, drummers have the mics all over the drum machine, all over the drums, the mic yeah. mug. But you're using top of the line preamps to get that pooch. So if that's what he was going for, then that means that he needed to get some kind of strong chip and converter to make these machines compete yeah. with the live drummers. And 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 they did a great job because a lot of live drummers lost jobs because of the drum machines. <laughs> you know, like we actually are working on a, um, a documentary called Drum Circles. And it's just mm -hmm. talking about how the drum machine was introduced to the culture and how we put a lot of drummers out of business because of these drum machines was super powerful. You know, like what and even what even happened from that point was um, the drummers that was really playing. They would program their drums and then they would just play live. They would play it live on stage, but yeah. they, they but they actual stuff was actual programmed drums. 
So they would, so when they do they live, they would play live drums. But when they was in the studio, they was using these drum machines and it was cutting down on the cost of the sessions as well. You know yeah. what I mean? Because, you know, the drum machines were already <laughs> programmed and locked in. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, I, I, I actually saw a video with High Tech, man. Uh, a shout out to High Tech also. He's got some, he was also somebody that I would look at a, a lot High of High Tech, stuff. that's my brother. I just did an interview man. with him. Yeah, he's man. I I I I'm telling you, like I, we were saying last time, I would dig up information on these producers, what they would do, how they would do it. I saw a video with High Tech uh, on the MPC. I don't know if it was a sixty or the three thousand, but he was sampling a, a live drummer in the studio. So yeah, had, you know, hit the kick drum, hit the snare, hit the hi hat, yeah. and you pretty much exactly the way you said it. You had the yeah. whole entire drum kit on the yeah. MPC. Yeah, that just knocked, man. Like those yeah. are little things that I always. It, it's just always engraved in my memory, and those right. are things that influenced me when I was uh, coming up. Not that I, I've, I've never tried that before, but it's stuff right. that just you know it clicked the way how the MPC was meant to be used, right. and it gave a, a very good sound. Yeah, I mean, and that's what they were designed to do. It was designed to give you a strong sound to compete. Because I mean, you—that's a lot of work. I mean, nobody—we're not drummers. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, so I could play a little bit, you know, what I'm saying just because over time and make a little pattern. But I'm not no drummer like that, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you know, but the sound that we going for is, and you know, and when you think about early uh, hip hop in the '90s, right? Our sound was so dominant that we were actually doing hip hop was doing shows with Red Hot Chili Pepper, Anthrax. You know what I'm saying? A lot of big rock groups, because a lot of the rock groups was like, man, how y'all getting your drums to sound that big? They yeah. were tripping. They kind of wanted to kind of get the hip hop feel, you know? Yeah. And now you get into the technology of today, and now we're more into workflow. Now, don't get it twisted. Mm. I like workflow because it used to be harder to do stuff back in the day. You know, you had to work super hard. You know, I mean, we didn't have, like, people don't understand. You got wave files. We don't. We didn't have wave files. You had numbers. You had to turn the numbers. So if you ever get a three thousand, or you ever get an ASR ten, or you ever get a sixty, you know, what I'm saying it wasn't until they started coming with the two thousand the XL where you start seeing the wave file. Yeah. You know, we had numbers. You had to use your ears. Like, man, is that is that right? Let, let me turn this number. <laughs> you using numbers like you 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 literally yeah. had to use your ears. And I think that's the era that's missing that people are not using their ears. And this is why I encourage the young generation, use whatever you want to use. Nobody is telling people not to use stuff, but be smart about what you use and understand. Sometimes learning the past will help your future because if you understand that a lot of the stuff is ears, people just use their eyes now. They see certain things with their eyes and they just go with their eyes and they roll with, okay, this is right. Sometimes you gotta use your you gotta use your ears. You really gotta use your ears. You dig what I'm saying? Man, that's 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 actually really deep. When I first got into the MPC one, I, I started with the XL. I've never used a 60, I've never used a 3000. Actually, the 60, I did hear it at Ricky, Ricky Tina Studios. Shout out to Ricky. Rick, um, Rick, I know he, Rick. Yep. He showed me the 60. And when I heard the 60, he, he played a sample, a drum loop between the 60 and and you know, one of his more modern uh samplers. I heard a difference right away, like just right away. I heard the difference. All right, you don't even have to compare it. Like I can hear right. the difference now between the the 2000 XL. It it's harder to hear the difference. And the one thing I did notice is now that I'm using the XL a little more, I, I drive that XL. I push that X at the XL. And a lot of people tell me like, "Hey man, you're clipping your 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 input signal." I purposely clip it. You know, I want to clip it to the point where you know I back it down a little bit. But then that's where I could hear a difference between the XL and my uh, MPC Live or my MPC One. Um, that's where I started kind of getting the character of the yeah. XL. Uh, yeah. With my MPC Live, uh, when I clip that one, it just it, it does is not pleasing. It's not yeah, in a that's pleasing not it. way. And, and I've nah, told people before, it. like the XL or no the the MPC Live and the MPC One, the sound is very transparent. Like I don't very think. So much. Yeah, and it's and it could be a good thing. I, I, in my personal opinion, I think it is a good thing because I like to have a transparent, clean sound that then I use those outputs to add color. If I want to go red, blue, pink, and then you, obviously you, you invest a couple of dollars in, in different pedals or outboard gear uh, with a clean signal, you could do whatever you want with it. 
Right. Uh, but w- when we go into a, a certain character that the NPC won or the NPC live, I don't think we've heard anybody say like, oh, that's that NPC live sound. Not because at all. I don't think, yeah, there's not like a really uh, right. a certain character to it. Right. Uh, but you right. do hear people say that's the 60 sound or that's the right. 3000, that's the SP sound, because right. those have a unique sound that they, they hold <clears throat> on to. Well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because this has been my argument from day one. And I don't think people really understand this. And I'm going to put it on and I'm going to put this as the best way I can. When I listen to the MPC one. Well, we already know that's pretty much an entry level MPC. That's the entry level. It, it has to be because, you know, it's one of the cheaper models. And then you got the live and then you got the, you know, the flagship. My thing is that there's nothing wrong with a transparent sound at all. You know, that's that's not the issue. The issue is if you have each one of your machines are not growing in the conversion of the sound, then something is weird to me because not, everything shouldn't sound like they all sound the same. Mm. And if you look at any flagship mm. machine that I've ever seen, it has a character to it. Whether it's transparent or not, like there's SSL has a transparent sound to it. But it hits. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It hits. When you get a certain type of machine, a certain caliber machine, it should be having some type of punch and depth to it, even if it's transparent, because we can color it and do other stuff, like you say, on the back end. But when it's still kind of thinnish and you're you're paying for something like that, I my my attitude is well, I'd rather yeah. go with a I'd rather go with an MPC one and take the rest of the money. And get some outboard gear, and then oh, I can do yeah. it because they're the same sound. Like I've never heard machines all sound the same. Like, bro, and I'm gonna put it to you like this here, so so I can get into your brain, so you can hear where I'm coming from. If I go to the Mercedes dealership right now, and I get, and there's three types of bins. You got a C class, you got an E class, and you got an S class. Each one of them are different, even though yeah. they look the same, right? Because they have their flagship bins, and then they have their entry-level bins, right? Now, the entry-level bins is going to be pretty much a four-cylinder engine, pretty much. That's what it is. So when you drive off, it's not got, it's not got that much power in it, right? Yeah. It just don't have that power. This is what I'm saying. Each machine should, when you start going up in price and price, you're talking about now you're getting a sound. Now you're getting something that's going to give you some dynamics, whether it's a transparent dynamic, whether it's a little color dynamic, it's still a dynamic. You dig what I yeah. mean? When we're not getting that, that's the problem. And, and, and you know, and Akai knows this, and that's a whole other conversation. But my thing is that I need the audience to know when you get anything you get, you got to understand it. And you have to understand what you're getting. I can have an MPCX and understand I get it because the workflow. I love that workflow. I'm a, I'm a Akai dude from day one. So this is not a knock towards a Kai. I'm a, a Kai guy. But when you start talking about the sound of it, then I have to start speaking on that, right? Yeah. So all I'm so all I'm saying is that when people get their gear, whatever they get, even if you start getting outboard gear, you got outboard gear stuff that don't sound the same. A SSL doesn't sound like a need at all. Not at all. You start getting into API. You know, you start getting into all of these other type of stuff. I see you got a... Um, you have the heritage. What you have the heritage? Uh, yeah, the the ten seventy threes. Yeah, uh, the the dual ten seventy threes, which they're, they're bad, Crazy. man. They're Crazy, bad. yeah. Crazy. Well, that, that, you know, that, that's the thing. You know, it's so funny because when you came out uh, just recently and you started uh, posting about the converters and all that, it's actually funny, man. I never told you this, but I had so many people coming at me in my DMs right after you started, you know, blasting the guy with. You know the sound quality, and a lot of people were like, "Hey, man, uh, you know, should I just invest in a, 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 a you know old school vintage MPC? Does my MPC suck, or the, the should, did I not make the right investment?" You have no idea how many people started uh, asking me and telling me, "Like, was this a bad investment? You know, I just bought an MPC." I'm like, "No, your MPC is good. Like, your right. MPC is good." And, and I like what you said because you, you said. Uh, you got to understand, and I think uh, once you understand the functions of your MPC, how to manipulate your own sound, you, you know you're okay. 
Uh, right. I, I, I am glad, and I and I definitely we all root for better sound. I don't think right. none of us are against. Like, no, you shouldn't say this. No, no of course, if Vakai could improve in their sound, that's good for all of us. No, and but at the same time, uh huh. Go ahead. No, and that was my point. Is yeah. that we're here as listen? I'm not just EA Ski. I am a buyer, just like you're a buyer, just like everybody's on here buyers. I'm not getting free gear. You know what I'm saying? And even if I do get free gear, it's going to be probably a discount, you know, at the most. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, because, you know, it costs money to make this gear. You know what I'm saying? So we understand yeah. that. But what I'm saying is that it's not the workflow of the machine is beautiful. Hands down, the workflow is one of the most incredible workflows you're going to get. And I love it and I got it, right? But I understand what I'm used to, and I understand what I've talked to the company about. See, a lot of people don't know the mm, relationship mm. I have with Akai on yeah. the back end. So it didn't make sense in the beginning. They didn't understand that I was dealing with them on yeah. trying to make you know stuff sound. So they didn't know. They didn't know. And I understand. So I want to put this on the record. It's not about having a bad machine. It's understanding what your machine you have, the limitations, and what you want to get out of this machine. One of the biggest things that I was telling people is that you can't go around going and dragging files into a machine that has an input and output. That is where your magic is at. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, exporting files across the thing and then exporting them back, you did nothing. You might as well have, you, now you have a MIDI controller. <laughs> no, yeah, just go on Ableton and drag Yeah, yeah, you, just have, you have a MIDI yeah, controller I, I now. I never you know? understood that. I never, it's just, I never that get that. It yeah. makes no sense. And I don't think people that come up in the industry and they haven't been told these things. This is why we need great content creators. We need people that will address these things so the young generation will start understanding how they can get their sound to start sounding immaculate because yeah. that's what I want. I want that for the young generation. I want them to sound great because I hear a lot of good stuff. But I'm saying, but bro, the sonics of it is very, very bad. And if we could step that game up, There'll be a lot of it'll. I think it'll be a lot of a whole new direction of of people that's coming and changing the industry. Well, what they're doing is a lot of ideas that's out there. But we have to start. We have to get back to the foundation of the sound. The sound is what's. This this is why we have ears. We we listen to sound. You know, if I'm watching a movie, I don't want a bootleg DVD where I see pixelated <laughs> stuff going across yeah. the screen because I'm using my eyes. Right. Yeah. So that means that if I get a bad DVD, I'm just like, hey, what's going on here? We need a better yeah. quality. <laughs> Same with your ears. You know what I mean? So that's all. Yeah. I, you know, that's my point. And, and, th and that's exactly exactly. And I think that's where we were at, too, of like just letting people know, like, hey, you, the MPC is good. Like, right. The sound is transparent. It, it's very clean. But. <laughs> You could do stuff, and and uh, I like the fact that Akai. I don't know what update it was that they allowed us to connect a, a class compliant interface to at least start uh, connecting a, another external interface, routing out your outputs. Yes, it does come with a cost, but yeah. I like the fact that that flexibility it is it, it's there in our machine. So well, you know, and see this, that, uh huh. And, I'm, and I don't mean to cut you out because I didn't want to forget my. No, no, go ahead. See, go my, ahead. Yeah. see, my problem with that is that that should be on the entry level stuff. That should be on the live stuff, right? Yeah. Where you can add stuff because it's cheaper. When you paying almost three grand, that should be there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just being honest, bro. Like, I, I like I don't like people nickeling and diming us for stuff that we spend our money for, bro. If I spent, bro, I gotta. SP 1200 Ronson. I don't have to do nothing besides plug it in and hear it slap. Right? Like, come on, bro. If I got to add stuff to a flagship, bro, when you say flagship, that means I'm getting the bells and the whistles. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, there's no if, ands, and buts, but I'm getting bells and whistles, right? Yeah. You're not just giving me the lights. You're not just giving me the cue buttons and all of that. You're giving me the sound. You're giving me the, like, the, the, the you know, the bread and the butter of what the Akai is built on. That's what they're built on. Their legacy is not software. Yeah. I think people forget this. Their legacy is hardware from the S950 on down. 
So when you give me a machine and it's cutting corners and then you tell me, oh, well, you can add this and that. Why? Why would I have to do that to your flagship? Yeah. You know, so no, yeah, yeah. That, so that's my that's where I get passionate about. You know what I'm saying? About that. You know, it's like, no, bro, that's not that's not fair that people that spend it three grand, because at the end of the day, you can say twenty six hundred. But with tax in California, you're going to push almost three grand. Yeah. Yeah. It goes <laughs> it's just 3, that simple. Yeah, yeah, and, and, you know? and I, I don't even know, but with the X, I, I think now you do get like eight outputs, which again, I, I do tell people like, yes, you are going to start investing, like you said, uh, in extra pieces of outboard gear, uh, preamps, uh, compressors, or any type of outboard gear, you are, you know, it costs money. So it, it's not something that's very cheap because even though you have a piece of hardware, uh, I've been trying out a lot of pieces of hardware right here and I, I've ran into some very bad ones that I'm like, yo, mm. this actually sounds worse. I'd rather use a, a plug-in. Like, <laughs> right. So so a lot of people right. are like, yo, I, I want to have something hardware. And I know the excitement of like, I just want to get something cheap that I can get into hardware. Uh, be very careful also, because like I said, I, I, you know, not to mention any names right here, but I've had some stuff that I've ran my signal through it. I'm like, yo, man, this just sounds bad. Like, I'd rather use a plug-in. Uh, yeah. I, I actually want to hear your input on this. I know you're not a big fan of the Apollos, uh, but I want to hear your input on this. Uh, what would you say? I have uh, an Apollo. It has, like, eight-channel input. A, uh, I think it's, like, 16 outputs. With the Unison preamps, for somebody getting started, probably doesn't have the type of money to start buying all these compressors and preamps and all that. Have you tried out the Unison preamps on the Apollos? I mean, being able to come out of your MPC, six outputs into the Apollo, putting some Unison preamps, giving your sound character. Have you tried out any of the Apollos or their Unison preamps? No, but my buddy has, and it sounds good. Yeah, and it I, sounds I mean, I, I, yeah, because I, I had the Apollo, and I've, I've tried the Neve. I pretty much set up like my whole Neve yeah. console uh, with the Unison preamps, ran yeah. my signal through it. It rocks, man. Like, no, it, no, it no. My buddy, pretty, my buddy, yeah. my, my buddy, my buddy has it, and I heard. I'm like, hey, that that don't sound bad at all. Yes. <laughs> no, well, no, bro. Well, I'm, I, I'm very, yeah. I'm very real about stuff. Like, bro, you know, when you're starting, it's not about having the best stuff. It's about taking advantage of what you have and learning how to yeah. maximize it, right? Because nobody has a billion dollars. You know, this stuff can get costly when you're trying to when you're talking about. This is why I've been telling people. Slow down, you know, get a couple of things, yeah. learn it, you know, get the, you know, just key little stuff that's going to help you and then build on. You know what I mean? You know, but if you have something and you can maximize like UAD is very, very, like very good at what they do, especially with their plugins. I mean, they make some of the best plugins in the game. You know what I mean? I mean, just and they're licensed by the actual company. You know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, it's, 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 it's dope. You know what I mean? It's dope. You know what I mean? No. And I think that's what it even goes down to of when I would get people reaching out of me of like, Hey, you know, what, what can I do to make my MPC sound better? What, what should I buy? Uh, even something we were talking about earlier is like, what's your, what's your goal? Like, what are you trying to do or where right. are you trying to be at? Uh, is this something, does it even make sense for you to invest in a stereo uh, preamp? for your MPC. Right. Um, right. Again, just because I will say something and then let's say you say something tomorrow and then somebody else says something, people are just like looking left, right, forward, set, you know, and yeah. it's like, I don't know where I want to be. I just hear people uh, saying different stuff. I, I think yeah. uh, people on the internet, like even me, I'll put myself in there of like, we all have a different direction. I always tell people in my videos, like, this is something that I enjoy. This is something that I like coming from someone like me. I'm not somebody that's worked with famous artists. I'm not somebody giving industry advice because it's something that I, I don't know about. You know, I, I stay where I'm at and I talk about things that I like. Uh, there's certain pieces that I enjoy, but then I might not use in the next year or two. Yeah. But I think it's very important for people to to understand, like, where are you trying to be at? Is it worth it to even go down that route or make that investment? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like I said again, man, you know, every everything that you get, you can, like I tell people, even with your dog or whatever you're using, man, you can make stuff be what you want to be. Just understand where you want to take it next. You know what I mean? Like I tell people, if you got, if you starting off, it's okay to get your ideas and your doll or whatever you have, right? 
And then you might want to resource it to somebody else that could probably take it to another level, you know, get you two, three good songs and take it to somebody else that could probably like touch it up and really take it to another level. Because I think a lot of people try to do it all and they don't really know how to get it there. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. I see that a lot. I see everybody trying to do everything, you know. But at the end of the day, you, you can't, especially if you don't understand the full dynamics of, of production. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That No, you, you said it right on the dot because I, I do my own mastering and mm -hmm. I know the basics of it, but there's nothing, nothing like just getting yourself a mastering. Somebody that will master your stuff for you that's just going right. to take it. They don't know what you're hearing and I don't know what they're hearing. So that's somebody that will be able to help me out a lot better than me just doing my own mixes and masters. But uh, I mean, now we, we live in an age where, like you said, everybody's the content, uh, the videographer, the, the producer, the mixing engineer, the mastering engineer, the publisher. Like we're right. in that age where a lot of people, well, I mean, technically you could do all those things, but right. should you, you know? I, I, I really, I'm, I'm a firm believer, and this is to all the fans that's on here right now, and I appreciate everybody that's on here, man, that's 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 listening, and I hope that y'all getting educated from, you know, me and my bro, you know what I'm saying, Milo, you know what I'm saying, we, we, I'm just trying to get people to understand that it's okay, let me see, what do you think about the machine MK3 sound? I mean, I like the sounds, I like the drum sounds and the stuff that come out of the machine, you know what I'm saying? But this machine is the same, the machine is not a flagship machine, so you get what you get from it. I still think you need to, you know, you know, get other stuff to make it, you know, become bigger. But I like the machine. I like the MPC-1, you know what I'm saying, for what it is, you know? When we start talking flagship, I expect the flagship. That's, <laughs> I, I don't have yeah. a problem with no machine in the world, but when you say it's a flagship, I expect a flagship. Yeah. It's that simple. But, um, but I think technology has really, it's pros and cons to technology, and I've always said this, it's a dangerous situation based upon who has it in their hand, right? Mm, mm, you know, yeah. if you have a uh, technology with somebody that understands the foundation of it, then you could be all right because you understand what was going on in the past and you understand how to handle it from what it was initially was. You know, yeah. we initially know that a lot of this technology comes from analog, right? So mm -hmm. everything that you get is analog. Analog, we got a 1073 plug-in. We got, yeah, you know, yeah. this plug-in. We got an SSL <laughs> plug-in. We got, you know, it's all stems from the analog world. So you have to go back and do the history of that. Mm. That's good, yeah. So when you come to the digital era, then you start understanding, okay, this is how they use it. So I'm going to use, because it's, everything is designed exactly like analog in wow, the, in the yeah. DAWs. You just need to understand the chain of command, right? Oh, a lot man, of people yeah. feel like they got to have five. I mean, I've seen a person have about 16,000 plugins on one kick drum. <laughs> oh, and I was man. like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Because you thinking having more, but your kick is getting smaller and smaller <laughs> and smaller. You know, so you got to understand the chain of command, you know, uh, uh, with your uh, uh, with your stuff. But starting off with with doing your beats and then trying to get somebody that knows how to mix and then starting off somebody that knows how to master. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the great way to start. I think just having everything. It's like giving a baby man. It's like giving a baby the house being home alone. Like Maca Macaulay Co Coughlin, just being home yeah. alone. You know, running through the house like a fool. You know, I'm, man, oh, man, I'm home man. alone. I can do, I can eat whatever in the refrigerator. I can do, just, you just, you going crazy. Yeah. With no knowledge, though. See, people are going crazy with no knowledge. And that's the scary part about why the culture is taking such a drastic stalemate right now. Mm. Because the creativity is not there. Everything is kind of, uh, is everybody's robots. It's a robotic world we in. Even the music sounds very sterile and robotic. You know, the sounds that's coming out of these machines are not pristine. They're just not really pristine. A lot of people don't, you know, they think when they get one machine, it's going to do it all, you know? Mm. And that's it. Mm. You know, this yeah. machine is going to do it all. I'm going <laughs> to sound like, I'm going to sound like Pete Rock and Dr. Yeah. You're yeah. not. You're not. You're not. There's a lot of more stuff that has to happen. 
<laughs> Boy, you, no, some, it, so, some of these machines will humble you, man. Because yeah, like, you, you, even like when you say of like all these plugins or all these modern MPCs or samplers in general, they're all like this vintage look, or that everybody's trying to do like the old school way. There's a reason why, and I think it always looks better to have a vintage sound with a good workflow, right? Like I feel like that is something that. I mean, it sounds great, you know, uh, even uh, I was messing with a plug in the Studer 8800 by UAD uh, and something you said, I'm like, how do I use this thing? Like, I, I, right. I've never used a real Studer. Right. A, you know, a real, right, I've right, never right. used it. So you now they're right there like, well, I don't understand the real machine. Right. I mean, I can just slap it on and I mean, it does make a difference, but I don't know and I don't understand the yeah. real machine and the purpose on how they would use a real machine. So right. I think people that, like you said, you study the paths, you study the machines, even though I'm not going to buy one, but it's right. always good to look at documentaries so, on how they were made and all that. So look, I mean, even with having like something like this, right? Yeah. Like I have, you know, the false text. This is a 16 multi-track, right? But it's got all the, the, the tape heads and the stuff that you use, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're using like you got quarter inch, you got half inch, you know what I'm saying? You got the two inch. The two inch is the big boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the two inch, see, people would man, people would lose their mind if they knew two inch would run you about three hundred, four hundred dollars for a reel. But you could only put Jeez, two, three man. songs on there. <laughs> you could only have three songs on there. Your shit better be good, right? It better be good. <laughs> it oh, better man. be good. Like I don't think people know how hard we had to work, and that means that when you went to the studio, you needed to practice your songs. You need to have them mapped out because. You don't want to waste no studio time. There was no time to waste. You come in that studio, that time is running. It's running and it's running. If you don't get it done, you don't get no extra time. You're going to have to pay more time. You know, it was serious, man. You had to come in there prepared to work. And, and like I said, again, with music, you had to be invested out the gate. In order to even oh, start man. recording, yeah. in order to start recording, like a lot of people, they have laptops, right? You know, so, you know, they can just start working on stuff and doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I think uh, uh, that's something that I even mentioned when I, um, when I put out my MPC 2000 XL video just like a, a month ago or a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned that and I said, you know what? These old MPCs, they're slow. Uh, it takes time. It could take me about an hour before I find out that the beat is garbage and I just have to <laughs> shut it down and I have to turn it off. And then right. with the newer MPCs, I was saying how good they are because I could make a beat in like 10 minutes. And I'm like, yo, yeah. this is something I just did in 10 minutes is good. But I, I like I like what you said. It just does not rehearse me. It doesn't prepare me. I, I get very lazy with myself right. and, and just right. me just walking in like, oh, I'm tired today. I'm going to just see what I come up with versus right. with my XL. I wasn't in that mindset. I was like, you have to work. I gotta make sure I make this beat work. <laughs> Because I just invested so much time. So now I feel like it could make us a lot more lazy. So in a way, it's still a downfall of just being able to make a beat in five minutes, ten minutes. Because I could do that with the with the MPC Live. But, I mean, I'm throwing away a lot of beats with my MPC Live versus I did on my XL. My XL, I kept most of them. But with the Live, if I, I can't even count how many beats I've just tossed, tossed. You, you just hit the jackpot. You just hit the jackpot of what I'm trying to teach the audience is that we have the luxury to work on so much stuff so fast and so quickly. We don't have to think about it. We just go through the motion and we yeah. do it. When I, I just got a new computer and my computer has so many plugins. I mean, I had so many plugins. I didn't even use half of the plugins I had. Yeah, that's I like, right. Yeah. Like, I had plugins. I'm like, oh, damn, I had that? I didn't even know I had it. That's how much stuff I had. So when I got the new computer, I made a conscious effort to dumb down everything. I oh, said, listen, man. I'm going to go with the stuff that I really, really like. I'm not, I'm not loading that up in here. I'm not taking up space for stuff that I don't mess with, you know? I'm going to get focused and dial in because after a while... You get so much stuff, bro, you become very, very uh, just distracted. You're very distracted. Like, I've found myself sometimes when I'm not on the older gear, 
and I'm on something, I'm like, all right, well, what plugin I'm gonna use? Or what oh, bass I'm gonna go man, to? Yeah. What, what, what keyboard? What bell I'm gonna use? <laughs> and I'm going, and I'm pulling down the scroll, and I see seventeen thousand plugins. Oh, I'm like, all right, man, that's a nightmare. I like, bro, <laughs> that's a nightmare. It's a night, bro. By the time I figure out what I want. I've wasted so much time because I have so much stuff, but I still have the luxury of having it. Well, when you have the older stuff, it makes you get focused. Oh, it makes man, you say, yes. this, this is what has to happen because yes. I don't have all of this stuff. Whether you're sampling it into it or whatever it is, you're going to make a decision and you're going to be committed. And that commitment is one of the greatest things that's going to help you mold you to become whoever you want to become because people are not committed. Everybody is just, you know, it's like a being, it's like not getting married. You want to have all these girls and all these girls, you just distract. I got girls, 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 oh, girls. Man. You, go, you go crazy with all these girls and you having all this fun, but you're not committed. And now you're 60 years old with no wife and nobody Preach. loves you. Preach. Nobody <laughs> loves you, bro. Yeah. You know? We got to get committed, bro. Like I said, again, there's nothing wrong with the plugins. There's nothing wrong with anything, but too much of anything can sabotage your creativity and your growth. And what I'm telling people is when you start getting back to learning how to do less is more and you start understanding of a focus and, and focus on certain things, it's going to push you to do like I've been on the 3000 for the last two weeks and bro, it's challenging me. It's like, okay, what drums I'm going to sample? What I'm going, you know what I'm saying? What I'm going to oh, run yeah, through yeah, this? yeah, yeah, yeah. got to make sure I, I have to be right on point. It ain't no, I got all of these options. I don't have all those options, mm. you know? So it, it challenges you, man. So I, you you just hit it on the nose, though, bro. That yeah, was I, real, I, I, real, I'm actually real talk. In, in the same boat as you. I, I just picked up uh, this computer. It's the M2 Studio. Oh, yeah, you got the just, M2. Okay. Yeah, man. It, it, it's, man, it, it's awesome. So I just got it. Uh, this is my, like, what, my third day with it. And um, yeah. I've been so frustrated. Man, I've been so frustrated. I had an Intel iMac of uh, the 2017. So I had all my plugins right there. So I grabbed this, and I, uh, most of my plugins do not work. Just my UAD plugins oh, bro, uh, work. Fine. Don't even, don't even start me. So frustrated. Don't even, <laughs> bro, I had to call my dude at Studio Link. I said, bro. I need I need my sounds, bro. <laughs> I need my I need I need my sounds, man. Yeah, I ain't man. got none of none of them in it. Oh man, it's terrible. I, terrible. Yeah, I, I still have my. But you know what? You said something, and and I told myself, I said, you know what? This is a good thing. I can start fresh. And one thing that I told myself is like, I don't need all this stuff. I know my my plugins is like icing on the cake, and it kind of gets me back to thinking about. Look, as long as I choose a good kick, a good snare, there's so many records that sound mixed before they actually get mixed yeah. because of sound yeah. selection. And right. uh, coming from right. like I used to record local bands uh, before I even had my YouTube channel. I used to record local bands around my area. And one thing I would try to do uh, as recording bands like drums, uh, guitar players, bass players was mix with my microphones and use certain microphones to mix my signal before I start mixing. So now, I mean, I'm not recording live musicians, but I am tracking out my individual outputs or selecting my kicks, my snares. So in a way, I'm still kind of recording by selecting what kicks and snares, sample, bass right. I'm going to use because they're not all going to sound good. Right. So now I'm just like, all right, look, you know what? I'd rather just have a handful of plugins. I'll stick with these. I'll learn these. I'll get good with these, but just make sure I do my, my production, my selection of the sounds good. So when I import these or transfer these uh, files right here, I think they already sound good without me having to, like you said, you know, put a bunch of plugins right there that ends See, up and making you, my mix sound flat. And you understand that. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand, sound selection and certain things that you do to get your stuff to sound warm and big. You know, you have to, these are things you study if you don't know. And it, and it, and it takes a while to understand these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not everybody's going to know that. Not everybody's going to understand that. I think a lot of people just want to make a beat. You know, they just, yeah. they, they really make, and I get it. The funnest, <laughs> there, part, the funnest part in the world is to make a beat. I mean, yeah. who don't want to get on a beat? Yeah. But you got to <laughs> understand what is a beat if it doesn't sound the way it posts to sound. Because the objective of making any beat, even if it's not production, is 
it it needs to sound good to the ears. You know what I mean? And I and I'm a firm believer of that in anything you do, your sound selection, you know, or your sound designing, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever one you choose, you yeah. need to know that you want that to sound good. So because when your audience hear it, that's your advantage. That is your advantage point is when it's sounding amazing to the ears. I mean, you could play it for an adult, an older person. They'd be like, hey, I don't know what type of music it is, but that sounds good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can feel, it's a feeling that we get when we hear music, you know? And that's just, that's an anonymous conversation. There's nobody that in the world, when they hear that, hear that music, they're like, man, that sounds good. Yeah. They feel it. That's what make records sell. So that's what we should be going for all the time. And the more dynamic your music is, the more it's going to cut through the mix and it's going to be easier for you to mix as well. Because now you have all of the, you know, you have all of the data. You have strong data. You know, the lighter the data is, the harder it is to try to get the data to be filled. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, even coming from a, a recording background, I would get people coming into the studio saying like, make me sound like this record. I'm like, right. I can't, I'm not a magician. I'm an engineer, you know, like, you know, I, some people would be like, make me sound like Beyonce. I'm like, I can't do that. You know, right. like, you're not Beyonce. So right. it's kind of in a way of, of how important your selection is, uh, the type right. of material you're selecting, the sample that you're selecting. I have so many people tell me on my comments on some of my videos, like, man, you make it look so easy. You make it look so fast. And like, I, I want to be able to do it that fast. But in my right. head, I'm like, Man, if you only knew how much, like how many tracks that I've gone through, that I've tossed, that I've thrown away. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think what, what's important is that having less in a way is having more. Like I, I cannot do, if you go through my sample packs and, and my MPC, I cannot do, you know, I had splice. I used to have splice, but I got rid of splice because I had thousands and thousands of kicks, snares, hi-hats. I'm like, I can't do that. I only need 10 right. kicks. 10 hi-hats, 10 snares, I'll use those for the next few months, and then I'll go to the next batch. Like, I cannot do sample packs that have thousands of kicks. Like, it gives me yeah. a headache. Like, I just like yeah. to go through and audition some of the kicks while my sample is playing, and if it just blends well, it mixes well, let's go. Like, I'm throwing that into my pads, and we, we continue with that. And later mm -hmm. on, if I have to, uh, you know, replace it, I'll go ahead and replace it. For sure. For sure. We well, man, I that's that's the greatest thing. So I'm hoping a lot of people are really understanding those things. Like even even when people send me like vocals and they're recording it on like a bad preamp or they room is not treated, it's like it's only so much I can do to give you yeah. the dynamics from your vocals if it's if it's not recorded correctly, you know. You know, you can only just touch it up as much as you can. You know, <laughs> I mean it's just real, bro, you know. The better, the more pristine stuff is, the more we can get out of it. The less it is, the more I'm just trying to doctor it. I'm just trying to put a Band-Aid over it, you know? And this is why you want to try to do it right the first time if you're in it for the real deal, mm, you know? Yeah. Because there's a difference between those who's in it for the real deal and those who's just just, just trying to do it. Like a hobbyist, right? Like yeah, like a hobbyist. Just, and, it's not, yeah, and, man, and I it's want deep, people yeah. to understand... There's nothing wrong with a hobbyist, but that's right, a that's hobbyist right. can't have the same. You 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 have to be realistic with your hobbyist goals and other people's goals are mm. two different things. Mm, so yeah. if you're in a hobbyist mode, you can't expect to work like that and get the results of a person that's trying to be oh, elite. Yeah. Yeah. They're two different worlds, right? So I want to address this because we talked about this and I hit you one time. You were talking about your 2000 XL. Let's talk about, you know, the, the, the little gem I gave you about, you know, the recording because we didn't get a chance to talk about that on uh, what I had told you. So you could probably, yeah. say, you know, say it. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, uploaded a video of uh, pretty much just sharing my frustrations of the 2000 XL. I love my 2000 XL. That's that one sampler that I'll never get rid of. I'll sell my MPC live. My MPC one, uh, just my XL is not going to go nowhere, even though it's the sample order that I use the least. Because, like I said, in uh, my video, it's very slow. It takes a long time. It's not the fastest workflow uh, when I can just do it within 10 minutes with my MPC live. So I was kind of sharing my video on that or my thoughts on that when you actually had hit me up and said, well, another workaround. I'm, I'm actually going to switch my, my camera around. Yeah. Um, but a workaround that is I have my MPC live right here is – Making my work, using the workflow of my MPC Live, all the tools, advantages of the MPC Live, but running my outputs into the 2000 XL, not doing any chopping on the 2000 XL, just using the sound of the 2000 XL. 
That right. right there changed everything for me. And I actually was uploading a video. I'm actually going to put it out hopefully by next week. But mm-hmm. I'm pushing my preamps. I'm mainly using the 2000XL for the sound of the 2000XL. There's definitely a difference in sound quality with this, but when I push it. So I'm using all the workflow, the new technology, and using the sound of the 2000XL by running the outputs into the XL, which was game changer for me. I'm sure a lot of people have done that. And that's something that I'll even say, man, like, just because I make videos, I put stuff out. There's a lot of stuff I don't know, and I'm so open to it. I'm so excited when I learn new stuff. So when you had told me about that, I'm like, you know what? I never thought about that. Yeah. Went ahead, hooked it up, and it's like I just it rekindled my love for my ex. It, I'm like, I gotta pop it out a lot more now. And it gets you excited because now you're working quicker. Because I mean, this is a man. You took a sample. You had to chop on 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 there. Is you gonna take a little bit? You sending it right to your thing, and now you're hitting the you hitting your converters. Now you're getting that sound. You're like, oh my goodness! Now you can start working. Yeah. Now you're working. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So I, I I have I have my input uh, just on my sampler. When you go to uh, what is it like function five on the XL, you have your sampler, your input signal on monitor. Just even having it on like that. I'm pushing the preamps on there and just monitoring my beat through that. I I already hear a a little bit of of saturation from my XL. So just having it on like that for me, I was like, all right, I I could hear a difference. Like I don't even have to A, B this. Uh, Of course, I'm pushing my preamps. If I'm not pushing my preamps, it's a little harder for me to even notice the difference. But when I'm pushing it, I'm like, okay, I can definitely hear the color of the 2000 XL versus what I'm doing on the MPC uh, live. Now, with that being said, I don't think that sound is for every beat. I mean, no. there's certain beats that is probably not going to sound good with that sound from the XL. There's right. certain beats that might sound a lot better just coming straight from the uh, uh, the MPC Live. So, uh, again, that goes back to knowing the purpose behind the right. beat, what you're trying to portray behind this uh, or trying to uh, what kind of emotion you're trying to give through the beat. Not every beat needs to have saturation. Not every beat right. needs to have some type of character. There's right. some that should probably just stay clean and sound transparent. Right. No, I totally, I totally agree. And if it's going to sound transparent, it just needs to have that, you know, that weight under it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. we don't want a thin, transparent sound neither. You know? Yeah, that's right. You no know, son. So yeah, no, I totally agree with you, man. And you know, I, I found it dope, dope that. When I seen your video and you and you was doing it, I was like, oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, just, I tell people a lot of stuff. And some people, uh, it's a weird thing. Some people are so comfortable being comfortable that when they get information, they don't take it and try to apply it. Mm. And I literally watched me tell you something and you applied it. And you were like, Dude, this is crazy. You got excited. <laughs> and it made me excited to know that you got excited because I was able to give you a jewel that you probably wasn't thinking about. You know what I mean? And no, that's man, dope. Yeah, yeah. No, that's even, dope. I had even told you, man, just for you to even reach out, take 15 minutes out of your day just to give me a hey, you know, quick input. Uh, that alone, for me, I was like, you bet your ass I'm going to try that right now. And <laughs> that's something that I, I even want to say that right now to anybody that's watching here or if any of my subscribers is even watching here too. I know YouTube uh, labels me as an educational channel, but I've told you this before. I don't look at myself as educational. I, I'm, a, I'm a student at heart, you know, and I, I look at myself as a student because when I'm learning my craft, when I get a simple, simple insight like what you had given me, uh, it re-sparks my first love for this craft that I'm doing. And I never, I never want to, look at myself as I'm a master at this. I know what I'm doing. Who are you to tell me what there's so many of my subscribers that will write down in the comments. Hey man, you know, you could have done this a lot quicker. Oh, thank you so much. Like I'm so happy. I I think I've received more putting my stuff out there than I have given. And I'm grateful for that, for the people that do reach out and do give me some insight because it just re sparks my love for what I do. I remember when I was just starting off making music Everything that I was learning left and right, it was just so exciting for me because, I mean, it's, it's a new venture that I'm learning. And when I got to a point where I felt like, oh, I already know everything, I kind of just died off and I just got a little cold and I just wasn't passionate. I didn't have love for it no more. So when I started my YouTube channel, I've always told myself, I want to make sure 
I always stay learning and stay a student and not try to be a master at this thing because it's always going to keep me on my toes and I'm always going to be excited. I'm always going to have passion for what I'm doing because I'm also learning as I'm going. And I learn a lot from my subscribers as well. So it's an awesome uh, a journey that I, I, I'm going through at the moment. And I, I hope it continues like that. <laughs> well, man, I'm going to tell you, man, Milo, you know, at the end of the day, bro, I'm very proud of you, man. Um, I love to see hungry cats that have that type of ambition that you have. That's what you're showing. The transparent, you know, uh, you not only that, you know, you making dope production and dope beats. Uh, you know, you're showing us something and um, is is and, and 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 it's inspiring. And I just hope, you know, like I say, a lot of formats change people. You know, sometimes as we get popular or as we get more recognition, <clears throat> mm, yeah. people start. You know, um, they start feeling some type of way about the pressures of becoming a little bit more popular. And mm. then they start tending to get into more of a superficial mind frame and get away from what it is that we, we're supposed to be doing. You know, for me, when I got into music, one of my biggest things was I don't want to forget what I got in this music for. I didn't get into it for the women. I didn't get into it for the jury. I didn't get into it for the cars. I didn't get into it for none of that. And I'm not to say that I don't have those things, but those wasn't the things that made me push the boundaries with the music. Mm -hmm. What pushed, made me push the boundaries was loving the music and still feeling like I'm that 14 year old kid oh, that man, was inspired yeah, by Run DMC. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the thing. And every time I go back, I'm always reminded of that because I go back and I listen to older music to get that feeling so I could do something yeah. great today yeah, because man, yeah. I tell people if you don't know your past your future is going to be really really jacked up and, I, and, and and I'm saying this I don't care what nobody say if you are not humble to what you're trying to do and you love and you don't study the greats before you you're going to have a very big conflict of who and your identity is if you don't understand the foundation of how you push oh, those boundaries yeah. into the future and I'm always humbled when I can go back and listen to stuff and say, man, man, I remember how this made me feel, you know? Oh, and man, so yeah. when I feel like that and I'm still feeling like, you know, I'm doing great stuff, I'm doing a bunch of big stuff right now, I go back to that. I have to still have that type of hunger to survive and to still be relevant and do something of greatness today. Because if it's just based upon the bag and if it's just based upon... I'm popular and it's just paced upon I can get the subscribers and views, then I have no purpose no more. And I have nothing to offer anybody because my 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 my, my objective is not the music no more. It's every other thing but the music. Mm. You dig what I'm yeah. saying? No, so, that, I mean that falls into knowing your why. You know, and a right. lot of people could do something because it looks cool. But right. they don't understand why, right? right. Uh, and I think right. that's actually very key. And even for me, whenever I, I get a little, uh, I guess you call it like beat block or like, man, I just don't feel like I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. And I'm like, man, I'm burned out. Uh, sometimes I just go back to the basics and just go to the basic foundation of what right. got me into it. Right. I listen to a lot of 90s uh, hip hop for me is what got me so passionate and love. Like my, I started itching for it. Uh, there's certain records, uh, New York State of Mind, uh, a lot of P-Rock's albums that got me just like, man, I, I want to do this. So I go back to the basics and I just very simple, not too complicated because sometimes I want to go super complex. I see finger drummers doing all this crazy. I'm like, man, I, I probably had to do the same thing. Right. So. I get very uh, overwhelmed sometimes, again, even with information, the the time that we live in with uh, YouTube, you see so many videos. And I think that just burns you out sometimes that yeah. it's like, you know what? I need to just shut this down and just go back to the basics, go back in my car, listen to music the way I used to listen to music and just fall in love again. And I think lately, as I started my journey here in YouTube, uh, I, I have fallen in love with this art, whatever it is that we call this, but I've fallen right. in love again. The reason why is because the community that rocks with me. And I, I thank anybody that rocks with me because uh, you guys spark inspiration for me. When I go through the comments, I'm like, I feel like I'm in a room of just a bunch of people that I know and we're all like-minded and it, it, it sparks inspiration for me. And it makes me feel like a kid again. It makes me fall in love with this art again versus when I was by myself, 
you know, I wasn't working with famous artists or I wasn't working with uh, the industry, people from the industry. So I was just a person by myself making beats. I had fun doing it. But when I just put my stuff out there and I started uh, just interacting with people, uh, it just sparked up inspiration again. I fell in love again. I'm like, man, I, I, I told my wife the other day, I was like, man, I, I feel like a kid again. Like, I feel good the way I felt when I first started. And it, it right. feels great. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every now and then you get, you know, people that just be hating sometimes. But it's yeah. good, too. You know, they, they I mean, you know, me too. You know, so it's, it's good. <laughs> people, people, a lot of times when people hate, is because of their ignorance. And what I mean by that is, like I said again, technology has allowed people to get so much information, but it's a lot of bad information. Mm. So when people start hating, it's because of their ignorance and they can't embrace the fact that they just didn't know. And instead of acting like, oh, I didn't know that, they're so embarrassed that they'll really stay with the ignorance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm learning, that people hate because of their ignorance. And sometimes you've been ignorant for so long and you've been projecting that out and, and acting like that was the truth, that when you find out it's not the truth, you don't know how to deal with that. So instead of saying, man, I didn't know that. I was taught wrong. They just still stick it out. You know what yeah. I mean? They <laughs> stick it out. And That's it's right. like, bro, that's not how you grow in life. You know, sometimes we have to just repent and bow down and say, look, <laughs> that's right. My bad. I, I, I thought I knew. Like I, I did. A, I, I did a live one time and I told people about eight hours. People didn't even know about eight hours. They, it was foreign to them. They didn't know about using sampling through the input and, and hitting the input. And, you know, and get, they didn't know. And I wasn't even mad because I understand we're in a generation where we don't talk about mm, sound. Yeah. We don't talk about sound. We talk everything. If you notice every campaign that's going on right now for the younger generation, it's all, oh, you can do this, you can do that, and you can do this real quick, and you can drag and drop and slide and slip and slip and slide and dance, and you you can and, do everything he, besides yeah. make it sound good. You know what? I, I, I You said something. Uh, you've said this many times before on other lives where you say, why is it when you go into shows like NAM or any uh, type of channels, you see the rock and roll people going into sound? And man, I was like, yo, that, that is so true. Like when you Facts. see more of like the hip hop community, it's Facts. all workflow. This Facts. machine can do this. This can do that. Facts. This is purple pad and this, this and that. But you never hear about uh, uh, recording gear, audio Facts. gear, microphones. Like it's very rare very to see rare. content uh, based very off rare. of compressors, preamps, very uh, different types of outboard gear. Because I feel like, well, people don't really care within this community as much as with that community. Well, and 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 and, it's, and that's a double that's a double edged sword kind of because if there's no body to really speak on it, then I guess. You wouldn't know. And mm. and the companies, their whole objective is to push whatever is popular for their agenda, right? Yeah, it's a business, so yeah. in the culture of hip-hop, it's more fast food now. It's wow. recorded yeah. so fast and so poorly now that majority of the people that want to be great at music will not get there. Because of what they're thinking. This is why I, I use my channel to reprogram the mindset and try to get them to understand hip hop is the only form of music where you don't have to know instruments. You don't have to know how to play instruments. Yeah. You don't know how to play drums. You don't know how to play keys. You can just find notes and do this and do that and kind of get by. And it's gotten worse as it's That's now 2023, wow. right? Because the way they make a technology, you can, you know, it's so much stuff you can do now in, in 2023. But in other forms of music, you got to be able to play drums. You got to be able to deep, play yeah. bass. You got to be able to play guitar. You got to know how to play keys. You got to know how to sing for real. You dig what I'm saying? We're the Man. only ones that can get by with getting by, right? So that means that companies don't have to cater gear to our ambition because we shortchange everything everything we do is shortchange we don't record on a level of okay even though we have the niche to do hip-hop we still need to be recording at a high level of how other journals record if we want to keep up you know it, I mean, wanna... it, it, yeah it almost seems like uh, we're looked at more as hobbyists 
versus other musicians. I mean, they're more professional people because right. they've learned how to play the drums, the piano. So they're, they're, they're a trained musicians. So it's like, hey, these are people that are, of course, they are already trained. They've invested time. They're going to invest also into gear versus, I mean, like you just, you nailed it right there. Like people getting into uh, hip hop music, it could be anybody. I mean, I Man. can teach somebody tomorrow and they're right. already making a beat. I mean, my daughter is four years old. She yeah. comes in and hit the drum machine and making beats. I'm like, dang. <laughs> I mean, it's not really hard to yeah. do this culture, but it's much harder to get it to sound where it could compete with any mm. culture. Yeah. See, it's easy to do hip hop on a low level, but it's hard to do hip hop on a high level. Oh, right? Man. Yeah. Because it requires you to have self-discipline. It requires you to know how you're recording now, how you're processing stuff, how stuff is mixed, how stuff is mastered, because this is going to determine on how you go and you get scores, right? How you go and, you know, how I'm able to get scores for movies, how I'm able to get stuff placed in, you know, soundtracks. They listen to this type of stuff. Yeah. They, they really do listen to this type of stuff, you know? So at the end of the day, when I go to Nam and I'm looking and I see all the rockers, all the pop stars, all the country, and they're looking at Shadow Hill. They're oh, looking at Imperial yeah. Lab. They're looking at <laughs> API. They're looking at the new SSL Origin. They're looking at the Need. They're looking at the API uh, 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 mix board. I mean, they're looking at all the big boy stuff. They're oh, looking at man, yeah. the, the, the top of the line, you know, uh, everything. Like, everything that's analog, they are in there looking at it. And then you go and you look at the other, you know, the, the hip-hop culture, and they up there looking at digital mixers. And, <laughs> and, and you're like, bro. Yeah. Because, we, because we want stuff quick. But to get real success, you have to put in the work. Man, I know that the culture is teaching people that you can work fast, you can do this, do that. And there's a lot of people that have gotten a chance to be, get some popularity from working fast. But this is the kicker. They're not here no more. They they come mm, and they go. Mm, they drop mm. off. They yeah. get that run and then they disappear and it's over. You know, we talking about if you're doing it and you're invested, you're going to have longevity when people believe in your product. That's why you can have somebody like, you know, uh, Steven Tyler and and all these rock groups, Elton John and all these, these dudes are still killing. They still selling records. They still are doing big tours because people honor the way they've been working. The way they work and the, and the, and the integrity of their work is very, very honorable. You know what I mean? Because Man, that's, that's yeah. how you work. <clears throat> this is how you work towards your goals, you know? And I don't mean it does mean that you have to have all the stuff they have. It just means that you, when you understand it, you build to making goals and you build and you build. That's how you have longevity. This is what makes people stay into your brand. Even when you're not on the radio no more, people will still come by you because they know that you've kept the integrity of your music. You know, I don't have to be on radio and I still sell records like crazy. Mm. You, you, because people know that I'm going to give yeah. them something quality. I'm not going to cut corners. I'm not. Well, those are the records that I, I even listen to records. You know, there's some uh, older records that you can listen to today and it still holds its value. It holds its value. Right. And at least my theory is like, man, well, they sound so good. I mean, I right. could hear a, a new record that comes out. I'm like, oh, this actually sounds great. But in a week from now, I'm like, well, I'm kind of tired of that. But Facts. I go back to, let's say, Sade. You know, I'll listen to some records from Sade, and I'm like, man, it just sounds so good. It just never right. gets old. I right. don't know if it's because I just like how she sings, but I, right. I always go back <laughs> to the sound as well. I always go to like, well, it sounds so good. It sounds thick. It sounds fat. Like, it, it just sounds so heavy compared to something I'll play to today. It, it, I mean, it sounds more saturated. <laughs> it sounds louder. But, you know, it, it's just something that I'll get tired of within a week or two. And I'm like, oh, I'm kind of over that song. Like, what's next? What's next? Or maybe right. we're just, you know, microwaving everything. It's just going so fast right now that we don't get a time to appreciate a right. whole entire album. Right. The way we and the it, oversaturation you know? of music, people are just dropping music so fast that even if you want to love it, 
it's very hard to love stuff that you just can't get a chance to process anything because it's something else, something else, something else, something else. Something else something, and yeah. I can't even process this. And so when that happens, you step back. And then you try to go into that time warp of stuff that when music would last, somebody would drop a record, it would last two, three years, three, four years. You be, you know what I'm saying? Because it was just, it was just dope and it was no fillers. You could listen to an album from the beginning to the end and it was no fillers. You would just be like, man, like I could play something right now and it's just like, wow, because the way it was recorded, the passion, you had to study, you had to study your craft, right? You had to study your craft. You couldn't just, you couldn't just rap. You couldn't just be a musician. You had to really practice. Because in order for you to get a deal, they need to know that you were prepared to go into these studios and not spin up all the budget screwing around. Mm, yeah. You couldn't screw around, bro. You'll waste a whole budget. And they said, well, we out of the budget now. And they like, bro, you 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 putting us in the red now. You know what I mean? Because it's only an allocated money for you to do. When you get in advance, that is your money to do clear your samples, record mm. your tracks, get your features. You know, I mean, if you want to put money in your pocket, pay your manager, whatever you want to do, that's what you're going to do. But you better make that money work. Make it count. You better make it count. You better make it count. And it ain't no room to go in no studios that's $2,000 a day to play no games. <laughs> Just start playing a little B like nah, nothing. Oh, nah, nah, you had to get busy. You had to get I busy. Mean, so, and, you and know. In a way, I mean, it's good to have a, a still studios that are out there, like actual commercial studios. Uh, I actually used to intern at New Monkey Studio out in Van Nuys. Mm. Uh, shout out to New Monkey Studio. I was interning there for a while as a runner, and uh, I learned a lot. I mean, I got... Man, it, it was a place that crushed me in a good way. And, and mm. I, I learned a lot of uh, good etiquette. Uh, and one thing that I learned there was exactly what you said. Like when bands come here, they're not going to show up just to mess around. They're ready to get started. So yeah. when I, I started running right there, you know, I would go get their coffees. I would go get food. And and just something uh, one of my mentors said, uh, Greg Cortez, if he's, you know, he's somebody that, that – it taught me a lot with recording. He said, it's not so much about you knowing the engineering side. If you went to engineering school, I can care less if you did or if you didn't. The most important part here is uh, uh, communication skills, uh, communicating mm. with people, uh, knowing how to be in a room with people, knowing how to uh, serve to people. Because when people show up, they don't show up just to sit down and see what they come up with. They show up ready. You know, they show up ready right. to start. Uh, they're, they're not messing around because these are paid sessions versus right. doing something at home where they can just uh, kick their shoes off and just right. see what they come up with. Right. Right. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, so, you know, I just think that people got to get back to really, really understanding what their purpose is. If you're having fun with music, have fun. Enjoy yourself. If you really, really are trying to do it, it is definitely a commitment and it's definitely understanding that you have to start dialing in on what it, what are you trying to accomplish with your music? Are you trying to get it placed? Are you trying to get a deal? Are you trying to put it out independently? You know what I'm saying? How do you want people to hear it? You know, what are you going for? Are you just making an instrumental album? Do you have an artist that's, that, that's going to compliment? Because I tell anybody, if you're making beats, you want to get you an artist that compliments what you're doing so you can mold and gel and come together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, what's your content? Is your content the same as everybody else? Well, if it is, then that's going to be a challenge because now you're in a, a, a congested lane. You know what I mean? You know, there's so many things when you're doing your music, we just have to understand where we're trying to go or whatever we're doing. And it's not saying you can't do it, but you have to start locking down and start saying, what do I want to do? Do I just want to make some songs and get them sounding good and see if people like them first? Do I want to get an artist? Do I want to try to shop it somewhere where I can get a publishing deal? There's mm. so many directions that you can go, but you have to know what you want to do. And I don't think a lot of people know what they want to do. I just think it's just the idea of making beats. It's just, that's it. I want to make beats. And it's like, okay, mm. that's cool. But, you know, don't get on there and you have all the stuff to say. And then when somebody call you out on it, you don't have no direction. You you, you don't have nothing to say. You know, <laughs> like I, I make my lives like, what are you trying to do? Whatever you want to do, I'll help you in. 
But please know what you want to do. What do you want to do? You know? And that's what that's I good. tell yeah. all, that's what I tell all my fans and people that talk to me is that what I do might not be what you're trying to do. Right? You know, I produce, I songwrite, and I'm an artist. So I wear several hats, you know what I mean? I wear several hats. I'm an engineer, you know what I mean? So I'm going to be doing multiple things. But if you're making beats, where you who you want to hear your beats? Do you want to hear them? Do you just want to stay in the house and listen to your own beats? That's cool. Mm -hmm. Or are you trying to facilitate them with somebody else hear them and you get a big artist on there? Well, if you're trying to get a big artist on there, you better be thinking about your sound. Because... People are going to listen to it and say, oh, man, dude, this sounds incredible. You can go in, listen, you go in a session with, I always say Dre because I look at Dre as the epitome of when you talk about sound, he cares about sound, just like I do. You go in the studio with him, when Dre hears something, his eyes will light up like, hey, hey, that's a problem. Mm. That's a good feeling when you know you've worked hard on your music and people of any caliber that's done something to be like, hey, that." That's home. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah. I remember the first time when, you know, me and Dre got together. Shout out to my brother King T. King T brought me to, to help him with his album, and he was signed to Dre. And um, I played some songs, and Dre was like, hey, that's that's crazy right there. That, oh, that's, man. that's what we go for, bro. Every time I post something, I'm trying to make a person feel like, whoa, this crazy. Yeah. That's what we go for. And I'm not saying you can achieve it all the time, but that's what you should be trying to achieve every time. It's like when you up the bat, you're trying to knock it out the park. Oh, man, yes. It, I mean, there ain't nobody saying, oh, man, I, I don't mind striking out. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you strike out, you strike out. <laughs> but that ain't what I'm up here to do, bro. I'm that's up here right. this bat trying to crack this thing out the park Every time, I don't even want a base hit. I'm trying to crack it out the park every time. You got to have that mindset if you love your myth, if you love your music. You know, it don't matter if you achieve that, but that's what you should be trying to strive for. And whatever yeah. comes between that, you work to make it better the next time. You dig what I'm saying? Definitely. That's the attitude that you should be having about anything you do, though, in life, though. It's just don't even have to do with music. This is in life. You should be trying to, to aim for the best, and you should be practicing to be the best, whatever it is. And you know what? If, if in, a, in another live stream, if we could, I'd love, I'd love, at least for me personally, I don't know if anybody else would be interested, but I'd love to get inside and actually ask you a few questions when it comes down to the mixing process, because I think yeah. that's something that is not talked about. And, and I mean, mixing, it's it's a very open sea right there because there's so many different ways. But I don't feel like there's any information, if any. Well, I'm, I'm sure there is, but it's not so frequent where I can see somebody going in, somebody like you that could dissect the beat or talk about their mixing process yeah. talk, you know i know you've talked about the recording and all that but yeah I, man i i know mixing is as important as sound selection as right. recording uh your 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 sampler through whatever converters that you have so it'd be awesome to do this on another live stream but get into the back end that i mean it's some stuff that i don't really see as much yeah you know awesome the mix to do man the mixing conversation it, it becomes the only reason why a lot of people don't talk about mixing because it's something you have to see, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's kind of because it can become technical to a conversation. So it's much easier to kind of show, you know, when you show certain things because you can see it when mixing is so many dynamics to it. You talk about this, you talk about that. You could talk about that and that, and it could go over people's head a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? Because, you got to kind of understand it. So sometimes it's best to be able to kind of like, I was kind of show cats a little bit how I run route, I route this and I dial in the yeah. EQ. I, I show little stuff here and there, but I definitely understand. But that would be something that you really, that you really have to kind of like show the board or show the, you know what I mean? Show little yeah, things like yeah, this is how you dial like it. like a master class or something. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, ma <laughs> like mixing is like a master class. It's, it's, it's really, and it's technical because 
everybody has different ways on how to do it. And it's not a right or wrong way. It's yeah. just certain techniques that people do. Like some people live and die by compression. And mm. I'm not really a big, I don't really have to use compression that much. Oh, you man, know what I'm I mean? I'm glad you said that. I, I yeah. definitely hear the dynamics in your music when you upload. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because I actually was curious on that. Like I, I'm a, the type of person that tries my best to dissect why does this sound so good? And I'm actually, right. now that you said that, I was like, all right, cool. Like, I know your tracks sound very dynamic versus a lot of the new stuff that's very heavy compressed, which also right. has a sound to it. And it does sound really pleasing. But I, I notice your tracks do breathe. They do right. have uh, space where the kicks, the snares, uh, the chops and, would breathe in. And a, and a lot of that has to do with not even so much the mixing. It has to do with the way I record. Like, so when I record, I have so much space in the track that four instruments take up a lot because mm -hmm. it sound it's so wide and big, right? So now when you hear the stuff that I'm doing, what's going on now is that I've recorded it right, I got it sounding right, and a lot of stuff that you hear is not mixed. So when you hear stuff that I'm mm. posting, it's not mixed. Oh, yeah. This is level. It's just me bringing levels because I recorded it so well, right? So now what you're hearing is song arranging and composing is what I'm doing. So so stuff that might all have been in there, I'm taking this out when this drop. I'm making sure that this ain't bumping with this. So it gives it that much. So when you hear it, you're like, wow, this sounds big. This sounds yeah, yeah. Because song composing and arranging is a big part of getting a great mix as well. Because you know that. You not having this bump with this. So this is gonna come in on here and this is gonna climb this here. And that creates a great mix as well, is arranging and understanding how to make stuff. Like some people, they fight with a kick and a bass, right? That's yeah. some of the people's biggest problems, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, so you know, you get people that, you know, they, you know, they uh they'll do a uh 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 when they duck it down, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, and, mother. You know, and they'll do certain things. You know, so it's all about understanding the arrangement of what you're fighting with and what you want the most in the mix. Do you want to hear more of the kick or do you want to hear more of the bass? So something's going to have to mm. compromise. We got to compromise it. You know what I mean? So, you that's know, why I side like, chain, right? That's sound, what sound selection. Yeah, like side the whole chain. sound selection. Oh, yeah. When you get the, the whole side chaining, which sounds right. like it could be compressed, but it's a cool way without it being compressed. Right. But even going into like sound selection, I think that's a challenge mm -hmm. and, and that's a, a, a whole art of his own, selecting which kick, which snare, or which bass to right. cover low mids or very low sub frequencies. Right. And I think that's something, again, it goes into understanding and it could take some time. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. There's beats that right. I've put out that I'll watch videos. I'm like, man, I can't believe I selected that kick. It's so buried in there. But there's a, so, a, an art that is within sound selection yeah and so i i always audition my my sample if, if i start with my sample chops and i start going through some of my kicks and if i listen to my sample that sounds very uh, there's a lot of bass in there then sometimes i might just want to leave the bass you know i'm like oh i'm gonna right. use the bass within the the sample and i'll leave it there i don't always right. feel like i have to put my own bass line like there's times where i'd rather not touch it like it just sounds right because it comes together very good without it being overly mixed so right. sound selection is that's 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 deep, man. Man, sound selection. Hey, you'll be amazed at what sound selection to do for your track, man. It could it could <laughs> it could it, it could be a game changer. It could be a game changer. But yeah, man, you know we'll definitely tap back in again, man. This was a great live, man. I appreciate having you on here, man. And oh man, thank and you. And touching on all this stuff, man. I think this was definitely great. I hope the fans, you know, what I'm saying y'all got something from it and. Y'all got a little bit of information, you know what I mean? Let's see what uh, some of these people are saying before we uh, log out of here. Frequency lives, ma lives, ma <laughs> frequency lives matter. I, I, I read a, a comment earlier that said, uh, you're about to put out a, a shirt that says, make sound, uh, make hip hop sound great again. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, let's be real. I, I think everybody knows that People are scared to say it and address the elephant in the room, but we know that the culture doesn't sound the way it should be sounding. Yeah. It's just like we we have to be honest, you know. We we have to be honest, you know. Like we can make this stuff sound so much better than what it is, and we can actually 
take it to another level. We have to stop cheating and we have to stop being lazy and we have mm. to stop cutting corners. And once we stop doing those things and we get back serious about the craft, the way we loved it and what whatever you grew up on, what made you love it and you take mm, that yeah. mindset, that's when you're going to start seeing the culture revitalize itself. You're going to start getting more people that want to challenge themselves musically. You're going to start getting more people more focused on their mixing, on their mastering. You're going to get more people. But if you're just in it for the bag and you're in it because you see the Cardi B's and the Lottos and the, mm -hmm. and whoever else that's out here that you feel like you're, you know, you're trying to imitate, then you're never going to realize your purpose of what you can be doing to add to the culture. The culture is lost right now, you know what I'm saying, because technology has given a lot of people instruments that they really shouldn't have in their hand because they don't understand the basics. Mm, so when you yeah. have, like I said, again, it's like everybody having a nuclear weapon, red button in their that house. That could be dangerous. We're dead. We're, yeah, we're all man. dead, right? <laughs> right. If somebody's going to push the button, we, it, we're we going to die. You know, That's if everybody yeah. got the red button in their house, we're dead. It's, it's, it's inevitable we're going to die because somebody can't help but to hit the button because they just want to hit the button. <laughs> you gotta that's what's going on with the culture. People are putting out music and they don't care about the culture because they never had to pay the dues through the culture. Mm. Oh, so man. if you never had to pay the dues and you never had to spend the money oh. and you never had to invest in the craft and the mm. art, then... When you're doing it the way you're doing it, it makes so much sense on why you don't feel concerned about the same thing that I am concerned about. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about us. We never used to sound as bad as we sound right now. We never used to have music that sounds so thin and loud. You know what I'm saying? We never used to have music clashing and just piercing the ears when you're like, oh, you know, like I've never, like <laughs> I've never heard, even, even back in the day when Cat Sports and Good Mixers, right? and stuff was kind of muddy, it had a sound that still was appeasing to the ears. Mm. Believe it or not, because of the way it was recorded, right? Because a lot of the East Coast cats, they had their own sound. They had samples and they had a bunch of stuff going on. They weren't, they sound wasn't as clean as more of the West Coast stuff. West Coast kind of yeah. had more of a, a pristine kind of sound because we're in the cars. We're in the cars. So we had to make sure our stuff sounded good for the cars. Where in the East Coast, it was more about the vocals, right? Because they're they're on the subway, they're on the train, they're in the headphones, right? So their process was different, but it still sounded good to the ears. Because See, that's, of the way that's, it was, that's good, yeah. Because the way it was recorded, it was recorded a certain way. When you start talking about digital technology, we have to be careful because there's a harshness that you run into now. You know what I mean? You're talking about an album, you're talking about zeros and ones, you're talking about now. Yeah. We have to really figure out what's going to appease the ears now, you know? And I hear a lot of stuff that, like, oh, man, it's crazy, man. You know, th that's crazy right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, so we just have to understand what we're doing with the music. And I think if everybody learned to play their role, if you want to be a good beat maker, make beats. After yeah. you make your great beats, now take it to somebody that can give you a sound that can help that beat sonically sound good for the great beat you made but when you're trying to make your beat you're trying to be your own engineer you're trying to be your own mixer your own master i mean that's 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 room for disaster that's disastrous right there man well i, I appreciate again you know i appreciate you taking the time to put this information out because I think there's a lot of, there's a shift and even within my own community, I feel it, you know, like a lot of people, the type of questions that I'd be getting from some of the people that are within my community, uh, it's a little more focused on sound and it's because somebody has stood up for that. Somebody has stood up and, and talked about it versus nobody was really talking about it as much. So I appreciate you for doing that step forward. And uh, that's something that uh, we we all have to be thankful for. And again, like I said, the whole thing with the Kai, who wouldn't want a better sound? I think we we are all appreciating that. And you're somebody that stood up for it. And uh, uh, man, thank you. You know, thank you even for taking the time for just being right here and doing these live streams. There's so many times I tap in. I'm like, man, there's like a lot of great information, but 
you know, you, you choose to, to come out and talk about these certain things. So right. at, at least somebody from me, that's not in the industry. Uh, I'm grateful for that. You know, we, we right. should be grateful to have somebody like you uh, coming out and just speaking on certain topics that are probably not easy for other uh, content creators to speak on the way you do. And I love the fact that you do it so freely. Well, you know, I do it freely, man, because I understand that I have a lot of people that I've helped in this industry. I've helped a lot of young cats. I mean, you know, some people might not know, but I've, I've helped Master P. I've helped some of the best in the game. And I've unconditionally did that because I understood that, you know, steel sharp and steel. What would I be? What kind of veteran would I be if I just allow stuff that I know is keeping because not everybody know what you know not everybody know what i know i'm watching people think that um one machine is going to help them sound a certain way they don't know certain things that i know and i know a lot of these companies know what they're doing so i have to you know like i said again my my approach is i'm for us the musicians the beat makers the producers i'm for that's what i'm because i'm y'all I, we mm. all in this whole community. So, and like I said before, if I'm rooting for us to have a better machine that sound good for us, then who is that going to hurt? Mm. It can't hurt anybody. That's a win for all of us because now we're getting stuff that's going to help us sonically improve. Let's just say you don't have a bunch of speakers in this net. Just working on a beat on a great machine and two tracking it is going to sound great because of the way it sounds out the box. That's, that's, I got an MPC 4000. I made a beat on there, just made a two track and I, and people, I was able to put it out with vocals on it and people thought it was like stemmed out. That's how great the <laughs> machine sound. It sounds amazing. You talking about 96 K you talking about <clears throat> understanding sound is what's going to help us go to the next level. And I've said this time and time again, and I'm going to keep beating it over people's heads. You can make as many beats as you want to make. You can make 600,000 beats per day. Nothing is ever going to happen for you if you don't start making them sound pristine and making people say, ooh, it's got to make people feel some way where they can draw into it. And that's going to come from the dynamics and the mix of that record. Of every track you do, you want it to have some type of feeling that pull a person in and say, man, I don't know what it is, but that's hard. Mm, even, yeah. if it's a, you, even if it's a beat that they've never heard, if it sounds a certain way, you have a great chance on getting people to want to mess with that beat because it sounds good to the ears, the way you recorded it, the way yeah. you went about it. That's what, see, people are not creative because they're trying to be like everybody else doing the same formula. And they sound bad. So what happens if you make something original and you sound good? You have a great chance on making that originality become something. Now you're the trendsetter. Look at Timberland. Timberland came out with a sound. And it was, yeah. was like, what is that? And like, it blew me away. It, but it was dope because it sonically still sounded good. But it was off. It was off beat, but on beat. You know what I mean? And you're like. And you start saying, man, this is crazy right here. <laughs> this, this, you start saying, this is crazy what he's doing. And then you just all of a sudden say, man, this is double. <laughs> we we don't have no more. Nobody is pushing the boundaries production-wise or beat-wise. Everything is the same snare, same 808. It, it's the same everything. We have to, we got to push. And, and a lot of that is why a lot of people are scared because they don't know how to get it to sonically come together where they can try something different and they'll have a better chance, you know what I'm saying, getting it out there. I really, I truly believe that. Oh, man, no doubt, man, no doubt. So, yeah, man, so, yeah, I just wanted to thank you, brother, again. This was a great conversation, man. I appreciate you, man. Stay on your grind like you're doing. I love what you're doing, man. Keep on inspiring and pushing people. Stay transparent the way you are, man, because it's great to see. I definitely love that. Uh, just, you know, and your hunger, man. You know, you could tell you're hungry. You could tell it's not just about you throwing content. It's like you're hungry. Yeah. And, and, and we feel it. And we feel it. Well, I know I feel it. I know I feel it because I know I wouldn't want to have you on this platform. I didn't feel it. You know what I mean? 
Oh, I man. Feel, I, feel. Man, I, I, I appreciate you, man. Like I said the other day, uh, just to have me here within your platform, you know, uh, I thank you for trusting me. And yes, sir. I, I had a great conversation with you, man. Like, you know, I, I my, my girl will tell me sometimes, like, man, what do you, like, how do you just connect with somebody? Like, uh, sometimes I'm like, well, because I don't have to know you face to face. Like, we, we the same family. Like, it, it, we right. share the same love, the same passion. It's just so much that I can relate to when we talk. And I think that's why we've been able to, to sit down and even have this conversation because even though we're not in the same room, but it, it still feels uh, so natural for us to talk about certain subjects. So right. uh, thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate it. I, I know everybody else is super happy too, just to be able to hang out. And, and this is like a chat room for us to just to sit yeah, down and, and have uh, uh, conversations and, and learn from one another. So thank you. Thank you so man, much for having you, me, Thank you, brother. And I appreciate you just taking the time. And I love the fact of just you being humble for information. Did we need more people like yourself. Shout out Polly Popo. What's up, my brother? That's right, man. Um, you know, we need more people that's that 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 really care about the art, man. And and I love it, man. And and I see that's what you're doing. You continue that path, man. You know, my line is always open. Whatever. If I, if you need me, I got you, brother. I'm there for you, brother. That's right, man. Thank you, yes, man. Sir. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, brother. You, Thank you, everybody. That's hey, everybody, in, man. man. Thank Shout you out to my so brother much, Milo, man. man. Thank you so you, much, man. man. Hopefully we can do this soon. Definitely, man. I can't wait to see your uh, your video with your 2000 XL, what you were saying. That's you right. Post, I can't That's wait. That's right, brother. Yes, right, sir. Y'all have a good one. Peace. Love, man. Peace. All right. So we just talked to the homie. Had a good conversation, man. Really, really good dude, man. I really like that guy. I really think that he could be a big future of content creating along with the beats that he's doing. I like I like that. I really do like that. And um, it's very inspiring, man. So hopefully y'all, uh, you know, got something from that. You know what I mean? Hopefully y'all stay inspired. Shout out to all the people that's been buying the converter shirts, man. Polly Popo, my other homeboy that just bought the shirt, man. And and if y'all haven't seen Polly Popo's video, he just got the uh, Neve drums that I sent him for buying the shirt. That beat is crazy, Polly Popo. That beat is dope. That's one of your dopest beats that I heard. That that's hard. Yeah. So you know, y'all go out get the shirts. Y'all get the shirts. I'll send you the uh, the, the new Neve uh, drums before the converter drums, right? So, uh, but check this out though. I got something in the chamber for y'all. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. You want y'all want to see something? Y'all want to see something? If y'all want to see something, tell me yes before I show you. Cause I'm not gonna show you if you don't tell me yes. I want to show y'all something before before I'm out of here. I want to show y'all something. Y'all want to see what I got to show you? Let me know. Y'all want y'all want to see what I got for you? Y'all want to see this? Y'all want to see this? Yes, yes. Ah, right. one sec. Told you I was gonna do it. Told you. I told you. I told you it was gonna happen. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you it was gonna happen? I told you. What is that dude right there? What is that? Is that a black little lion over there? Right here? Yeah. I told you. I told you. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Is that that black little lion right there? Yes. He's there, and he ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> yes, indeed. It's about to get serious, y'all. It's about to get serious, man. That black lion on there is rowling. Raw. He ain't playing no games. I. <laughs> Look, get out my door. <laughs> oh. oh, man, man. Yeah, it's serious, man. It's serious. So yeah, man. I'll let y'all know what it do when I um hook it up. 
I haven't, man, I just got it the other day. I haven't even got a chance to uh to dial it in at all yet, but um, I'm about to. I just want to take my time and get focused and get focused. See, you got you ain't easy. Mark, what's up with it? Yeah, man, you know. Man, I get excited about sound, man. You got to understand, man. I love that, man. When you can get on the machine and stuff sound amazing, that's the best. That's the best feeling in the world, man. So, yeah, man, I just want to share that with y'all. I told y'all I'll let y'all know when it come. came in. It came in. Yeah, man, we're going to see what it do. We're going to see what it do. I'm going to put it to the test. You can believe that, brother. You can believe that. I'm not playing. No. So, yeah, man. Shout out to everybody on there. Hey, once again, hey, go get the converter shirts. Y'all get the converter shirts. You get these new knee drums that I got. They fire. They sound dope. Go check out Polly Popo. He got a dope beat on there that sound really, really dope. You know what I'm saying? So go check that out. You get these Neve drums. Let me know what's up. Y'all send it, you know, saying you get the shirts, just take a photo, you know, send it to the site. I'm going to post it up. I'm going to send you a link of the drums. So that's how it works. So if y'all want the Neve drums, that's how it's going down. Converter drums are still being worked on now. And uh, man, we're going to get it. You know what I mean? So, man, shout out to everybody that's on here, man. Um, man, y'all stay blessed. Stay prayed up. Shout out to Milo again, man, for the interview. And, uh, man, let's get it, man. Let's stay focused, man. All right. Let's go. So, Ski, you got to tell people not to get laptops because you can't hook up analog mixers unless you use USB. I know you don't like USB. Not really. Not at all. I've been telling people to get the analog mixers for a while. I've been telling them to get the analog mixers for a long time now. To be to be honest with you, that's what I should have finished up with Milo too. Is talked about you know uh, the USB mixers and uh, with the analog real mixers, you know. But uh, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll get back on it. We'll jump on it. You know, saying so right now, I want to see what this MPC five thousand about to do. Like that's what I want to do. Y'all go get the converter shirts. Go get them knee drums. Y'all going to be missing out on them drums. Them drums is cold, man. Hey, salute to everybody. John Connors, I see you. The only mix I got is from 99. Born. Analog mixer suggestion. I like the, uh, I like Soundcraft. I, 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 I like Soundcraft. I keep telling people I like the Soundcraft craft. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like. <laughs> so, yeah. Y'all go check it out. I don't. I haven't heard the new Mackie ones though. I haven't heard the Mackie ones yet. You know what I mean? I don't know if they sound as good as Soundcraft, but I had a Soundcraft, and it sounded pretty good. Yes, indeed. Y'all go get the converter shirts, easki.com, and go get the knee drums and come with it. All right. Holler. Peace. <laughs>